as I mentioned previously, there was some developments with the speedrun version of GTA 5, where it was found how to remove stuttering as you approached 188 FPS in GTA 5. And I realized that this and another fix that removed the FPS limit of 188, something that 5M, I believe, does. I realized that'd be of interest to like more people than simply speedrunners or those who play 5M. So I asked Gogsy if they could whip me up something to give you guys, and they have kindly done so. So Gogsy is a person who helps out a lot with the GT5 speedrunning community. Very knowledgeable in, in GT5 and all that jazz. They see here, an ASI mod that fixes audio related stutters and optionally removes the 188 FPS limit imposed by the audio engine. The mod is distributed in two versions. The stutter fix only fixes the high FPS menu stutters while leaving the 188 FPS audio engine limit. GT5 uncapped FPS both fixes the stutters and removes the 188 FPS limit. So if you want to play GT5 casually and you have a powerful system, or even just a, a normal system like this, and you just don't want the menu stuttering, you can use this to get a better experience. Obviously, you can't use this online. You need script hook for this, uh, as it says down here. But for some of us, like me, who play challenge runs and stuff, this should just make my experience better, which is cool. So if you're interested in that, feel free to get it. Thank you, Gogsy, for helping me out and everyone else as well. So I was asked here by Div, I'd like to know your thoughts on Rockstar collaborating with slash supporting smaller creators more than larger ones. For example, creator Mirandorian recently got a care package from Rockstar during her first playthrough of GTA 5. Similarly, creator MoJVD got a package during his first playthrough of Red Dead Redemption 2. And I've attached a screenshot of a very small creator whose Red Dead Redemption online outfit they are endorsing in game. So that's this post from Rockstar. 2,000 likes. And it's just everyone, of course, underneath asking, where's GTA 6 trailer? But Rockstar says, Turn heads in a haunting Red Dead Online outfit skillfully assembled by YouTuber XXX Queen Inferno XXX. Get the clothing pieces free from the Wheeler, Rawson and Co. catalog and the mask from Madame Nazar. So this isn't new. We, I believe we've actually talked about this before in Rambles, how Rockstar has in various different posts, not very often, mind you, but they have highlighted some small creator doing a particular thing or, you know, in this case, you know, has some integration with that creator who's designed some stuff. And do I like it? Of course. I like any integration or any collaboration or any acknowledgement from Rockstar of creators big and small. They, of course, aren't just acknowledging smaller creators. They acknowledged Kai recently and even DM'd him. In this case, it's possible that Rockstar it just wants more, like, community additions for microtransaction content in the stores in their games. They want skins made by fans, perhaps. You know how Valve does their loot boxes and the skins are made by the community that go through a rigorous review process and then the skins are put in the boxes and the boxes are sold and some portion of the money from those boxes are given to the artists themselves. Which is obviously pretty cool. Not that loot boxes are particularly amazing, mind you, but it is cool that artists can make a lot of money off these kind of things. And it'd be cool if Rockstar also did something similar. Well, obviously, I'm not going to change things for GTA Online or Red Dead Online right now. But in GTA 6 or GTA Online 2, it'd be cool if community members could, like, submit things they create and Rockstar could then sell them and give money to the creators or whatever. Obviously, it's a minefield to navigate. I know, like, Bethesda has kind of screwed up with, um, and what's that thing called there? The creator market or whatever, and like they overpriced a bunch of stuff and tried to sell mods and stuff, and, and everyone was so pissed and whatnot. Like, like you gotta do these things right. The, the creation club. Like, I, I think a lot of these companies are realizing, as YouTubers have realized, that stuff made by the community can be not only high quality, but it can be made with passion. And there's only so many things you can do personally, or you can do as a company, but the millions of people who, have a passion for your product or whatever, uh, they can think of things that you can never conceive of that would be really great for what you're doing. And so if you can integrate that somehow in a way that's not exploitative and can potentially benefit them, that's a great thing. Like you've noticed I do that with my Reddit recap. I don't have time or, or can possibly conceive of all the way that my work can be manipulated to make funny things. And so it's cool to give other people a chance to do that and to have it seen. So that's all I see with the, this as being. Just Rockstar working a bit with the community, giving a shout out to someone small. And that's a good thing. But as I say, this isn't a new thing. They've done it many times before. If I was more keen, I'd scroll back and find another example. I mean, here's Rockstar retweeting that they're sponsoring 
Game Changers Gaming Marathon for a fifth year. It's also possible to remember that some of these people could have associations with people at Rockstar themselves. Oh, here we go. So this was uh, like a month ago. Red Dead Online stylist extraordinaire Don Mosh Thug assembled this bounty hunter themed ensemble, our latest featured community inspired outfit. Get all the pieces from the Wheeler, Rawson and Co catalog. And I mean, I guess they do also showcase the best GC Online jobs as well. Yes, yeah, so we talk about Rockstar not really doing much for the community. I guess they do do some small stuff, right? Which is cool. Good on Rockstar. Please do more. So I saw an interesting little clip by Lucas on Twitter. In GG Online, bottom dollar bounties update, Rockstar broke the yellow highway paddles. Before they would tilt and hinge, since bottom dollar bounties, they cannot be interacted with by players and instantly break off their hinge when contacted by a vehicle at any speed. I noticed this. I thought I was crazy. I like this confirmation that I'm not insane. So this is before the DLC and they're all falling down as they should. And after they just stop like that. The <laughs> Rockstar, Rockstar, please fix. The reason I saw this was because silence tweeted this out and the legend silence who's you know obviously the guy who's made the silent patch and helped a bunch of older games be playable on pc and helped out a lot of people the seemingly nothing is obviously a very good dude legend in the modding space he says here imagine a gg online update without regressions affecting single player i would never and this is something that i've said myself many many times that i hope gg online 2 is very much so separate from gta 6 entirely separate if at all possible where you've got like two launches on the desktop that just separate files entirely like i know that's not going to happen because it would be massively a, a waste of space on your pc to have like doubles of all the files and stuff and I i'm sure there's efficiency reasons perhaps why they both use the same files and interact and stuff and it can create a seamless experience jumping from single player to online which is what i believe they hope with gt5 and gt online even though it was always a little bit clunky to me so while acknowledging that I don't think they will have them entirely separate, I hope that they've at least learned their lessons from GTA 5 and GTA Online, that they recognize that there's a potential for small changes they make in the online version to affect single player. And, and they'll be more cognizant of that and have, have at least created some greater degree of separation. The idea that the monkey business bug in GTA 5 still exists after all these years is insane. For those who don't know, in the current version of the game, when you approach the mission monkey business, something loads in incorrectly and it causes Michael to be spooked and he runs away into the distance. Then you leave the area, respawn the mission, come back and you can start the mission. Doesn't happen if you taxi in, but like, how many how many years has that been in the game now? Like, over five years. Over five years. Probably millions of people have interacted with that bug and been confused as hell, left the area, come back, and, oh, the mission's actually here. Okay, weird. And Rockstar just never fixed it. There were obviously a lot of smaller bugs as well. I remember one time where the single player characters had any numbers on their clothing show through their clothing. So like Jimmy would have a different outfit on, but it would show the 17 from his normal outfit, even though it wasn't meant to be for that outfit. Random text has appeared in single player that's meant to only be in online. Like tons of different small changes in single player. They've just made the game worse because of changes online. And I, I, I hope they've learned their lesson. So on occasion, when a large content creator starts doing Chaos Mod, people often message it to me or show me because they're like, hey, here's another person doing it. And uh, always makes me happy when when people can experience the joy of Chaos Mod. But, uh, but it's an unlikely creator in this case because it's uh, seemingly like a Nintendo creator. I, I got this message here. Professor. Professor? I suppose an intentional misspelling of Professor. A YouTuber who grew rapidly during the COVID quarantine period, known mostly for their Nintendo-related gameplay, has decided to do a playthrough of GT5 using Chaos Mod. I watched Proof a bit and it was interesting, seeing someone unfamiliar with the effects reacting to them for the first time. Seems like he's having fun with it. Don't know if it's worth a ramble section, but figured I might as well put it here. I love the comments though. Poof is the new Dark Viper EU. So there's a bunch of comments naming me, of course. I think that's pretty cool. Obviously never expected to be so heavily associated with Chaos Mod, but I suppose after all these years of, you know, working with the people and, and, and developing it more and making so many videos on it, that's inevitable. But I honestly think it's something that, I think I've said this before, that every creator could do, even if just for a few videos, and their audience is going to love it, you know? And I just liked seeing evidence of that here, where 
similar sorts of numbers to his normal videos, but it's GTA 5. And I think that's suggestive as to how broad the amount of content creators who are gonna jump onto GTA 6 is likely gonna be. Because even Nintendo creators are like, you know, GTA 5, pretty good game. And I think I'm gonna feel the same way about GTA 6 and we're gonna get some content from some surprising sources, right? So yeah, if you wanna uh, check out someone new to GTA 5, Chaos, having a playthrough, feel free to check it out. And uh, I wish him the best in his playthrough. So as you guys know, I constantly go through my old footage and I've been going through a lot of it, especially to make uh, shorts and stuff. At least, you know, once I've found all the best ones, I won't have to go through it again, but like, it's just, I need to go through it all at least once. I've had a bunch of people help me. And I think I have finally found my very first interaction with a cougar in GT5. I say here on Twitter, I can't believe this exists. The first time I met a dog in GT5, this was like 2017. It wasn't in a mission at least. Does that dog actually want to have a go at me? Huh. Oh shit. It's dub. What? What the fuck was that? <laughs> the way I say it. What the fuck was that? <laughs> Considering I caught it a dog and I had no idea what it was. That must have been my first time. And that's years after playing, I, I guess. Because I'm doing a, I'm doing practice there for a hundred percent. Cougars don't traditionally show up in missions or speedruns. Cool clip. What's the most awful GT Online award? Well, I have been doing them over many years, so it's hard to remember them all specifically. I think it's either going to be Numero Uno because it was bugs and I couldn't get it, but the award itself doesn't show you what you've done so you just kind of got to guess and when it bugs you have no idea which one of them have bugged so there's like forum after forum after forum post up the post after post dedicated to people being like okay this one can bug in these 17 different ways so take a look and make sure they haven't bugged in that way for you and it's just nuts the second worst or perhaps the worst depending upon your perspective is the one where you have to steal 50 cars from the salvage yard the, you're the highest that you do that because you can only do three a week so that guarantees bare minimum without glitches 17 weeks you have to log on that's, that's just that's just stupid that's nuts if i want to grind something let me grind it like they should make an excuse like yusuf being like yusuf he buy, he buy too many cars this week so like he'll only give you 25 percent of what the car's worth if you really want to still give him the cars and so normal people wouldn't do it but, but those who just want to do the highest or want to grind the award will be able to. And I think it would mean way better. But whatever. What I'm hearing is you loved Arena War. I did all of Arena War in 18 hours. In one day. So, well, yes, there was one or two Arena Wars awards that were horrendously bad because you needed to get a certain level of EXP. Because I had people who could help me and who, we could just start a game, have them fail and just do that over and over and over again for hours, I got up the level far quicker than anyone else would. Those awards would be the worst for a casual player because no one wants to do arena wars. And they, the average person probably doesn't have a bunch of people to help them. But for me, it wasn't that bad because I got them all done in one day. Things are worse when they're obscured, they're ambiguous, or you can't do them all in one go for me. Because I'm a person who likes to see a problem and just tackle it and get it done instantly. Or as fast as possible. Like just put my full force of my efforts on a problem until it goes away rather than being like well i gotta look at this for the next 17 weeks you thought the dancing award looked brutal okay yeah true the dancing award was also quite brutal okay yeah that actually might be the worst how did i forget about that dancing award red dead one run when uh i stop into is it fresh riggy who does the red dead stuff I've, I've stopped into his stream a handful of times um like doing a run of a game that's long is tough at the best of times, the one you're in, not very familiar with is, is a struggle, you know? I got a lot of respect for people who do very long runs. Like, if a person is doing a really long speed run, you know they're very committed, like, they, they care a lot. Like, back when I used to do 100% runs of GTA 5 all the time. Fuck, I miss doing that so much. Like, why did I try and learn any percent? Like, why didn't I just at least finish a run of any percent? And uh, I didn't even... Why did I learn any percent and then not even finish a run of it? I, I gotta... Go, mm. Tomorrow, I'm gonna go back to it. Like, I don't need an amazing run, I just need to have one with the updated strats. Try beating my PB? Yeah, that should be very doable. There's no way I'm gonna be able to run it enough to be perfectly proficient, but... Red Dead 2 speedrun world record is 12 hours and 26 minutes. Like, 26 minutes is a lot of time, but... 
you can guarantee if there were more runners, like over enough years, they'd probably knock that off. And the same thing that happened with um, GT5. Like sub 12, like it's obviously a cool milestone to hit, right? For a, a game this big. Am I gonna spear on Red Dead 2? I really did think about it, like I wanted to, but I just didn't feel like the resources were there for it. And the basis of my level of experience with the game is so little that it's, it's hard to do. Like generally speaking, most people who start speedrunning a game are already very passionate about the game and, and or know a lot about it. I know that wasn't the case with me with GTA 5, but it's normally the case, like, people who are very experienced in the game and love the game and want more content in the game, that's the people who start speedrunning. And, uh, I don't know enough about Red Dead 2 for me just to easily be able to speedrun. Sub-12 is impossible, but it might be- it would probably be possible one day. Like, as I'm saying, if, if enough time was dedicated to it, right? Could you see this game being made into some sort of movie? A long time ago, when I criticized Red Dead 2, I argued that I think it would have been better as a TV show. And I've warmed up to the gameplay, and I like the story. I mean, I always did. But I still, I still think, like, it would have made for a great TV show. And maybe that medium would have been better for it, but it doesn't make it a, a, a bad video game or something. Like, video games have to have stories. Like, the story video games are still valid, right? Yeah, but I think the story of this game would have been told even better in a, in a TV show. Do I prefer the gameplay mechanics in Red Dead 2 or GTA 5? I think the characters in Red Dead 2 feel more weighty, in a way. Their interactions and animations are more real. I prefer the gameplay of GTA 5. It might be because I'm more familiar with it, but it's just more smooth and uh, like clean. It's more responsive, you know? This game is slower. It, like, it fits the mood, it fits the time, but it's... You're not going from A to B at the speed of sound, you're meandering, kind of slowly getting there and whatnot. And it's the same way with how the characters feel and act as well. It suits the game, but it's... You know, I'm, I'm more familiar with GTA 5 and I prefer that gameplay. We are now going to do everyone's favorite part of my content, where I look over the best comments on my videos. One of my mods, Kana, has cooked me up something really cool. Is this cool looking overlay with all my videos in it. And like when I mouse over one, it pops out and shows me the, the comments selected by my mods as the best comments. They don't read every comment, but they read all the top comments to see which ones are actually good. So I'm up to the death of Lamar and Jimmy. How this even ended, episode one. 31st of December, 2018. Look how cool that is. I found Matt Chanel from his speedrun series back in 2019, before Facts and Glitches, before Chaos, before Pastus, before Oko. And in a more recent Rambles video, he mentioned he won't be speedrunning anymore since he's so washed and fallen so far behind. It's a shame too. I don't really care for the newer stuff he's been doing. I'll still check in every once in a while though. This was my favorite channel too. Why is this here? This ain't funny. It is interesting that some people only like the speedrunning. They don't like the challenge runs and even just my normal runs do so well. I always seemed there was just a new audience. I was always picking up new viewers and stuff, but apparently some people are just really dedicated to that stuff. Fortunately, I am doing still some speedrunning, so I hope this person stuck around a bit. <laughs> How the speedrun started. Technically, no, because there was probably hundreds of videos before this episode, but all of those got edited and combined into compilations that you can see at the top of the playlist for How This Even Ended. A legend was born. Not really. <laughs> Man, I remember this was one of the first videos I watched back in 2018. The old days were nice. I would talk with my friends about you and how you had world record back then. I miss high school. I have heard this before, that in my earlier days, when I just started to blow up, people would uh, be in high school talking to their friends about like the most recent video that I released, which is interesting. And I assume many of those people grew up and are still with me to this day. It's insane how much Matt's beard has grown. <laughs> it's not, well, it's definitely not longer now. The thing about having Facial hair that grows pretty fast and is pretty thick. I've styled it in endless different ways over the years. Jelly. I wish we could watch all 143 of the ones that came out before it. Honestly, if you watch the compilations, you see literally everything of value from those episodes. But I have considered uploading all the old episodes in their raw form somewhere else, but I haven't got around to it yet. And I mean, on the VOD channel, all the old runs that I have are being posted there. So you actually only the completed runs are being uploaded there. So I guess you wouldn't see all my old speed run stuff, but there's so much of this content around that there's, you don't need more, you know? I'm not denying you anything good. Anything good for my old content, I bring to the forefront and allow people to still watch. The start of one of the greatest series on YouTube. And I guess one day there'll be a GTA 6, how this even ended, we can hope. Only legends remember that there were 100 short episodes before this one, and back then it was titled, How'd the GTA Speedrun End? 
Didn't sound as good, the other title, but that's true. The days when Matt had to be convinced to reset and not the opposite. No. I remember in the early days, there was a day when I spent like three hours in prologue. Because I just wasn't satisfied enough with how I was doing the very first mission. <laughs> no, I reset a lot back in the day as well. These days I'm less likely to reset. Apparently we can super thanks on these old videos. I wanted to say thank you for all the good content you give us. You truly are one of the YouTube channels of all time. So true. I see any super chat that people give me on my YouTube videos, especially because there's so few of them. I get like two a month or something. When I open the comments, super chats are what I see first. 